Ladies and gentlemen, children of America, maybe not children, but youth, young people that watch this channel as a source of inspiration and, and motivation, uh, welcome to the show today. And today we got a big one. We got a big one. This is one that I've been excited about for a long time. Wait for it. Oh, come on. Come on. It doesn't get much cooler than that. So today we're going to be talking about the B&T APC9 Pro. And I'm gonna tell you up front, it's gonna be a meaty one, okay? It's gonna be a nice, thick, meaty review today. And I would recommend watching this one with your favorite bourbon. I like that that's kind of, I joke around and say that at the beginning of some videos, I like that some people are actually doing it and they will send me photos of whatever drink they're having as they watch these reviews. But it's gonna be a lengthy one. This is, I will tell you, this is a bucket list gun for me, okay? Straight up. This is a bucket list gun for me. It's a gun that for about a year and a half, I have had my eye on. And uh, the only reason you are not seeing this review sooner is because uh, they are pretty much, you have to sell a nut in order to afford one. So it's just taken a little while to put the whole package together here. But we're gonna get all into that. Before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping and all that good jazz, which would be, you're here right? You're fucking here, so you may as well subscribe to the damn channel while you're here, because why the hell not? I'm telling you, we make cool... Are you looking? I mean, can you guys see? The... We're, we're filming on the top of goddamn mountain, y'all. Like, the hike up here sucked. I ate it a couple times. We're doing this for you, for you, the people of America. So if you're going to come here and you're going to see this, at least subscribe, stick around a little bit. Um, if you want to be bold and you're feeling generous, you can always um, donate to the Patreon page at the time of filming this. We've got one Patreon member. Bryce, that's a shout out for you. Thank you, sir. He is a 7.62 member. That's right, $7.62. So uh, you can go there. It's going to help us do cool shit and, uh, you know, make this thing a, a viable thing to keep it going. So feel free to do that. We will have the link down in the description. And uh, then for those of you who are new, who might not know really what the 1911 Syndicate is, yes, we do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, media, uh, I don't know if media is the right term, but, you know, produce a lot of videos and stuff. But then behind all that, we are a uh, pretty much a niche real estate company that most of our clientele is military law enforcement, shooters, hunters, uh, the kind of people that would go mark those couple moose that we saw just a few minutes ago. And we operate in a lot of different states. If you're like, hey, do they operate in my area? Go to 1911syndicate.com. You can check that out. And if we are not listed in your area, no problem. Send us a message because nine times out of 10, we can still um, we can still help you. So check that out. Pew, pew. Call 1911 Syndicate if you want to buy a house. Let's see. Let's, before we start really diving into the B and T here, just a few more little things. So the gun, 
I would have loved it if it was provided to me by b and uh, It was not, so this was paid for on my own dollar at a straight up retail gun shop price tag. And uh, so I've really got nothing, uh, you know, no allegiance there or anything like that. Gun was purchased by me. The uh, Basically everything on this was, was purchased by me. The only uh, caveats that you will see on this is that obviously, hey look, it's a super, super cool color. And uh, that was done by Alex over at uh, Taylor Tack Arms. We'll make sure we tag his Instagram page. I think it's Taylor Manufacturing and, and Arms. We'll make sure we tag him below and give him a shout out. He, for those of you, we're kind of getting into a little bit of B&T stuff, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with these guns, they come as just a black gun and that's cool and all. They look great, but B&T actually has a bit of a limited edition one that they've done with that has like a couple different shades of FDE and me not being able to get my hands on one of those uh I told Alex I'm like hey look let's kind of do that multiple shades of FDE but we'll reverse the colors so it doesn't look like a factory B&T so if you're like that looks kind of like the FDE ones that they do yes but the colors are uh inversed but it came out very very cool uh Taylor Tack Arms, local company here in Utah. You can check them out for Cerakote and all that good stuff. Anyway, there's that. Beyond that, uh, Sly Tactical Sling. I'm not gonna go too much into the build here because we are gonna probably have a separate video. Long story short, we're gonna get into some of that stuff. Sling is from Sly Tactical. I'm just mentioning that because we are a uh, an affiliate with them. So uh, the sling setup is very, very cool. You can run it from two point and then swap out to a single point sling. So you can run these however you like. Very cool setup. 1911 Syndicate, no spaces, all lowercase is your code there, which will get you 15% off. So cool stuff. So before we start getting into specs and uh, all that good jazz, Let's talk a little bit of context because we are going to have quite a few subgun or PCC pistol caliber carbines reviews coming up. The first one that would be out by the time that you are seeing this would be on the Flux Defense Raider, while not a subgun in the PDW category, so I'm kind of lumping it in there. We are going to have multiple different PCC reviews coming up, and this is probably the first sort of big one that we've got coming. So as we get into talking about subguns, I think it's important to lay a little bit of context because sometimes people get into a weird like, well, I don't know why anyone would need a would need a subgun, right? Or a pistol caliber carving. So to me, look, there's very clear answers on why you would want a nine mil or hell, it could be 40 or 45 or 10 mil or something like that, but why you would want a PCC. And Everyone, guess who's got notes today? So I'm gonna just give you a few of my reasons why I like them. So, uh, first of all, ammo cost. Nine mil, despite it being the Wild West right now, generally speaking, gonna be a bit more cheap to shoot than 223, and that's true now, even though everything, you're paying out the ass for it. So, gonna be cheaper to shoot, therefore you're probably gonna shoot it more, which may lead you to get better with it versus shooting 223 or 556 or whatever, 300 blackout. God knows what billionaire is able to shoot 300 blackout right now. So uh, there is ammo cost. Over penetration. Now I, I am gonna immediately give a caveat to my point, which is, hey look, I understand that, you know, there's gonna be 556 five, rounds now that are gonna start to eliminate some of the over penetration cons concerns. But hey, especially in a home defense type scenario, hey, nine mil for a lot of people, especially given your living conditions, may wind up being a better round for you so that there is that. Uh, so we got over penetration, we've got ammo cost. Sometimes a gun doesn't need to be able to shoot that far, right? If you live in a super urban environment and you're like, well, a 14.5 with an LPVO would be a lot better, like, yeah, but you live in a downtown environment, you know, the longest you're ever going to be shooting is a city block, hypothetically, that might be a hundred yards, you know? So it's like, yeah, that's cool that you can go shoot out to 700 yards with it, but like you live on the 23rd floor. When the hell is that ever reality? Whereas something that's maybe only good or so out to a, you know, hundred yards, let's say, give or take, may actually be a better option for you. So take all of that. Another point in favor of PCC is gonna be mobility. Uh, one, obviously, even with the stock, yes, this is SBR, even with the stock extended, you have a very, very mobile package that in some sort of 
either urban or indoor environment. This is gonna be a lot more maneuverable. It would also be from a mobility perspective, a unity mount, so it's not as high, but all of that configuration will fit very nicely into a lot of EDC bags. So this is a Cry Precision EXP 2100. We did a review on this, so you can go look at that. It was the last bag in our EDC bag series. It's an awesome, awesome bag. I've been running this uh, APC in the Cry bag. Stock collapsed with the can in short mode and it fits fine just to give you a sense like hey look if you can have a, a legit amount of firepower in a very discreet relatively small bag right so those are some of my reasons where i think look i get short barreled ars and stuff like that are cool but i do still think that there's relevance for the subgun market okay now if we look sort of specifically notes coming back out everyone at b and let me give you some of the fundamentals here. So first of all, B&T, or Brugger and Thomet, is a Swiss manufacturer. And if you don't know much about Switzerland, I can tell you they don't make no shit, okay? And that's more of a technical way that I just put that, but they don't make no shit, okay? And the Swiss have a long history with guns, evidence to the fact that if you go travel around over there, uh, you will see, I mean, I've been in, uh, God, this is going to sound so fucking bougie of me, but so when I've been in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, which is right on Lake Geneva, I mean, I've been in this old, old town and I see old gunsmithing shops from back in the day. I mean, it's, it's very, very cool to be in these old Swiss cities and literally see gunsmithing shops. So the Swiss have a long history of making very, very nice things as they do with guns, watches, and many different things. Um, the APC, or the Advanced Pistol Carbine, uh, which I literally did not know what APC stood for until I started doing this review, um, has actually been around since 2011. I recently was staggered to learn how long this has been around because I was watching Don't At Me, I was watching uh, White House Down, Channing Tatum, in his prime when he was still doing stuff, and uh, I was like, are the terrorists using b and Yes, they are. They're using TP9s and they're using APC9s. And I was like, that's staggering. That's from 2011, right? So, or like 2012, something like that. So, despite these being like the hotness right now, look, they've been around for a minute. I, I was staggered to learn that. Now, since they have come out with the APC9 Pro, which what you're seeing here that does have a few differences between that and the original APC9. The Pro model was released in 2019. In 2019, also the reason many of us are aware of it, it did get picked up by the Army as their, uh, I think the official term was their subcompact machine gun, okay? So there is a standard length, which is this, and there's a K version, which we will get into a little bit later. But hey, look, as a general rule of thumb, I believe these are mostly gonna be more so in the special operations side of house. So hey, look, when, uh, and they did just get picked up by the Air Force, I think this week that we're filming this actually. So look, they are getting picked up and fairly widely adopted generally once special operations uh, units start saying, yeah, that's the, the sub gun that we want. I would, I, you know, I would pay attention to that. <coughs> All right, enough with the T's. Let's get into this bad boy. So what we're gonna do, cause there's quite a few interesting things to talk about. We're gonna start lower, then we're gonna go upper, and then who the fuck knows, right? It's gonna get wild after that. So let's start with the lower. So what is interesting, What's interesting about the lower is that it is not serialized, okay? So, the serialized portion of the gun is actually the upper, okay? And much as is the trend these days, what that gives you the ability to do is run different lowers. Very, very cool feature of the gun, okay? So, basically what you can do is... What I have on this is the factory B&T lower that's gonna be running factory B&T mags and we will get to the mags. Now, you can basically pull a couple pins, kind of like an AR, and swap out the lower to either a Glock lower, which is obviously very popular, or a SIG 320 lower, which I have to imagine is a lot less popular, but someone, Someone who's running 320s, uh, they gotta be out there somewhere. So anyway, very, very cool. The benefit of that is if you looked, as I've had a uh, 
friend lately who's been thinking about picking one of these up and he's a total Glock whore. I've been telling him like, look, for you, get the one on the Glock lower. It 100% makes sense because you're not gonna have to go and stock a bunch of B&T mags. You've got all the shit that you need, right? So it's one less thing to have to worry about because look, the mags, the guns, all this stuff's hard to find. So it is a very, very nice feature, very well thought out on B&T's part. And those lowers, you can do that with their GHM. Uh, which is kind of a more budget version of the APC-9 Pros, but it is very, very, very cool. The lower is also full ambi, which is a very, very nice feature, okay? So for me as a lefty, for those of you who don't know, this is a big selling point for me, even though I can navigate an all-righty gun, it is not ideal. So basically what you've got is, hey, if you're a righty, which of course I am not, you're gonna have your uh, safety, you're going to have your uh, mag release that's going to be over here, and then you're going to jam a mag, and then most of you are going to drop that mag. This mag release is going to work a little different than what you're used to. It is going to basically push down instead of being a button that you push in, so it's going to be a lever that goes down. I will tell you that on a full mag, these levers are going to start to get very, very stiff, okay? And I don't like looking at you guys in the eyes and saying the word stiff. It's uncomfortable for me, it's uncomfortable for you. Let's just come to terms with it, okay? But it's a stiff lever, okay? So you're more than likely, you're gonna be downgrading your mags to about 28, seems to be about the sweet spot. So, hey, just know that it's nothing really different than an AR, but hey, just, you know, be aware of that. For you lefties out there, the gun is gonna come with an ambi safety. And so you're gonna have an ambi safety there. Uh, you are gonna have all the exact same features, but you're gonna have it on this side of the gun. So you're gonna have mag release, you're gonna have bolt release, or you can run it on this side. You can do what, look, the point of it, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I don't care what you do, like you do whatever the hell you want. You've got options and options in life are good. Uh, the, another very nice feature, right? It's the Swiss, guys, everything's well thought out. The pistol grip, this is not the factory pistol grip that the gun comes with. It comes with one that is relatively hideous and way too big for a gun this size. But what's cool about it is you can take that bad boy off, toss it in your little catch-all drawer, and you can run any AR style grip on it. Big perk, okay? So what I've got on this is the Reptilia, I think they call it like CQB. I think it's the Reptilia CQB grip. Um, but if you just look up Reptilia, it's basically gonna be a short, more sub gun or CC or uh, CQB oriented grip. It's gonna have some texture front and back. It's gonna be smooth here. I've debated stippling this for a little bit now. And for some reason it just, it's not bothering me to the point where I feel like investing in, in getting it stippled. Um, it is short. It's gonna have a very nice grip angle, but point being to all that, you can swap these things out. The trigger, uh, let's talk about the trigger. So um, it is, it's actually pretty good. And so this is, so for those of you, uh, so, you know, you're, you're gonna have take up, it's gonna have a relatively nice break and then the reset is, is gonna be pretty good. Uh, the trigger for me, I would describe it much in the same category that I describe my Knight's Armament trigger. So on my, SR15, the trigger that comes on that, you go, there's better options out there, but this is pretty good, and it's not certainly not bad enough to get me to invest money at changing it. So for me, this trigger is in the category of like perfectly acceptable. It's pretty damn good. It's gonna be a lot of lot better than certainly some. Uh but I just don't think it's worth the money to swap these out. They are they are pretty damn good. And uh, the benefit you do have is that AR triggers are gonna be compatible with this. I do know that Geisley is coming out with a specific B&T trigger, I'm told. That might be juicy enough to get me to drop 250 on that bad boy. Uh, but pretty cool if you go, hey, look, I'm used to running Geisleys or this or that or whatever. Cool, you can throw it in these. And I gotta tell you, this with like a Geisley trigger in it would just be absolutely filthy and nasty. The Ambi Safety, it's a point uh, that is important to discuss. So if you're a lefty, it's a train wreck. If you're a righty, it's still a little bit of a train wreck, okay? And what I mean by that, so if you're a righty, if you're anyone, if you're a lefty or a righty, it is really stiff. 
again, sorry guys, but it's, it's, it's very stiff. Okay. So the safety is just really, really tight and, um, enough that you may want to have that thing sent off to some gunsmith to do it. So I sent this over to uh, Alex at Trajectory Arms, who's uh, phenomenal at what he does, and he transformed the safety. It's still the factory safety, but he transformed it. So one, you're probably going to want to lighten it up a little bit. Two, if you're a lefty, the, the uh, left side or the more righty-oriented side, the paddle is way too long. So if you are a lefty, and you are running your gun, of course, as a, as a lefty, the paddle is going to extend out far enough that it's going to just dig way into your hand. So Alex both smoothed out the safety so it's a lot more easy to manipulate, and he also shaved off some of the excess paddle that's on that left side, and he did a seamless job with it. So good job, Alex. But the safety is not great. Uh, you're probably going to want to have that work done. That's just my two cents, though. Okay, a um, couple other things. The magwell, not the best feature of this. Well, I guess to clarify, there really is no magwell. I mean, there is the most slight of slight magwells that go around here, but generally speaking, you have a scenario where it's a box into a box, and you're going to have to be pretty sight precise to get that mag in there. So there is an aftermarket magwell that you can put on. It is really ugly, but it really helps. So I have not made that trade off yet because I'm still trying to roll with style points on this. It does help, but it looks like shit. Okay. So it, you know, that you might fall into one category or another. The Glock lower, I haven't run the Sig one, but the Glock one also not super easy on reloads just because the Glock mags are going to come back at a little bit of a backwards angle. Not that steep, of course, but a little bit of an angle. So you are going to have to really find the sweet spot on reloading these things. Just be aware of that. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's go ahead and talk about the, the BNT mags. So the weak point in the whole gun is the BNT mags. I don't regret getting the BNT lower. The Glock lower, I think for many, many people is going to make more sense. The BNT mags, to me, look, they've got two problems. One, you've got this extremely nice high-end firearm, and then you just have these like plastic translucent mags. Do I really care about the translucent thing? No, not really. Like it may even help you just keep track of your round count. It does have it marked 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, it's more an issue of like, look, the two issues are So that's how the mag comes. And I have never experienced this nor seen it. I have heard rumors through the rumor mill that, hey, if you say hypothetically are doing a uh, reload and your mag doesn't seat all the way and then your mag drops on a full mag, these could be flimsy enough because they do have a, you know, you know, seams in essence that, that are holding these together that on a full mag could crack your mag. I've heard that's true. Again, never experienced it. So take all that with a grain of salt. The solution, it would appear to have some level of truth. Otherwise, why would BNT make these, which are these rubber bumpers that go on your magazines so that, again, if your mag is dropping and hitting either pavement or a floor or whatever, less likely to cause issues. They're a little clunky uh, and on a chest rig, not really a problem, but it is going to create a little bit more of a traffic jam space wise. So know that you're definitely going to want to add the BNT bumpers. The biggest problem I actually have with them is so the uh, lips up here where when you're pushing, depending on how you reload mags, right? When I push down with my thumb, I'm not kidding. The lips on these mags, I bled the first time I was jamming a BNT mag. Uh, swear to God, that's not an exaggeration. I was out the range and I was like, I'm literally bleeding right now. I mean, these the corner of these lips are literally a like a needle point that are absolutely insane. I don't know it, how it makes it out of Switzerland with their level of perfectionism. I don't know how that makes it out, but it's completely unacceptable. Uh, and I did have to take a file to very lightly file these down so I don't fuck up my expensive magazines. Um, that is the weak point of these mags, okay? If we look at the upper, so you do have some caliber choices. You've got nine, you've got 45, you've got 40, and you've got 10 mil. The 10 mil, that's the only other one that would like really kind of get me excited. That That is pretty fucking sexy. So 
As mentioned earlier, there's standard length, which is this, which is gonna be a seven inch barrel. And then there's gonna be a K version, which is gonna be a five and a half inch barrel. Now, just my two cents is I would stay away from the K. The, yes, the army and the military seems to be adopting the K versus this one. I don't really understand why the, the biggest issue, like, look, I'm telling you, when I hold and shoot this gun, I go, it is perfect. And I have just enough room up here to get everything I need on the muzzle end of this gun, which for me is going to be, look, my essentials are gonna be a light. I am not running backup iron sights. I will tell you the gun does come with flip up backup iron sights. So that's a nice perk that the gun comes with irons, which seems to be less and less a thing these days, but I'm not running irons because I've got irons in my in uh, as a backup inside of the Unity mount. Okay, so all I've got on the fore end here is a uh, light with pressure pad, and then on this side I've got my sling attach, so um, I can go from two point to one point and all that good stuff. Suppressor, but that's a you know that's a different thing. So I have a very minimal amount of shit on the front end of this gun. Also a hand stop from True North Concepts that has been the only thing thus far that I've put on here that, that I've really liked. The K version, very simply, it's just too little space. Like if you are running, especially if you're gonna have it as a night vision gun, you're just gonna run out of space. Um, that's the biggest thing. And in terms of hand placement, it gets real tight real quick. The Picatinny rails that are on this, will come off and underneath those pick rails is actually M-lock slots. So if you're like, I either like pick or I like M-lock, cool news is you can run it either way. You just back these out and then you got M-lock. The reason I've left these on, one, selfishly, I kind of like the contrast of the black uh, with, the, with the tan, I think it's cool. But also per how I'm running my sling, it needs to go on a uh, pick rail. And so I need pick rails, so I left both of them on. So, hey, look, just my two cents. I think the standard length is a go-to all day. The K, I just think you're gonna be getting really tight on space on, with the caveat, unless you just need a super short gun and you don't give a shit anymore. Okay, so you've got a direct blowback firearm, which I am really neither here nor there on. I don't really care if it shoots nice. That's about the extent that I care about that. They have a hydraulic uh, buffer system that is makes the recoil impulse very nice. So if you're wondering, okay, yeah, yeah, all this shit, how is it to shoot? Very, very nice to shoot. It, it, I'm telling you, it is a absolute pleasure to shoot this gun. If you're not getting the gist that I already love this, spoiler alert, this is going in a very positive direction. The only real con, even though, hey, it's gonna be the case with many, many guns, is that if you're running a suppressor on it, hey, all that's just blowing back into your gun. So. I have not cleaned this gun. I have not done anything to it. And it has given me zero issues in terms of reliability or anything like that. I haven't had any malfunctions yet, but you do get a real fucking dirty gun uh, with the combination of things that are happening here. In terms of how the gun's gonna come, couple options, probably not gonna come as an SBR. It's probably either gonna come What's well, probably going to come as a pistol. The variation, the 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 variable is going to be: is it coming with a pistol brace or without a brace? And that's going to start to dictate your price a little bit, and we will get into that. What I can tell you is: look, there is a lot of great options for pistol braces and stocks for the APC nines. The particular one I've got is a factory BNT. Factory BNT. Telescoping stock, okay, so when full, the reason, there, there's really two sort of philosophies you're gonna see with their braces and stocks. You're either gonna see a side folder, so they have side folding uh, pistol braces and or stocks, and then they're gonna have telescoping uh, braces and or stocks. I, for the purposes of a tiny footprint, given that this is gonna largely be a bag gun for me, I wanted that footprint to be as tiny as possible, so I wanted that tele telescoping stock. So they do have, I believe it's Gearhead Works that, uh, sorry, I thought a rabbit just leaped out of that bush at me, everyone. So it may have, I don't know, I just, the bush moved. But Gear, Gearhead Works, I believe is the name of the company that basically, hey, they take this stock system and they replace the stock portion uh, with a brace and it's, 
it's very good. These things are not pr uh, cheap, okay? So these stocks are run about 600 bucks, which is, you kind of feel like an outlaw when you buy one because you're like, this is very expensive and it feels so wrong in so many ways, but I'm like thrilling because like, how could it be that much? So it's very mixed emotions when you spend that much money on a stock, but really very, very nice, uh, nice lockup, factory B&T product. So there's all that, very MP5-like. In general, great aftermarket products made for the B&T or just uh, options direct from B&T. We have, let's see, a couple more things here. So we've got a non-reciprocating charging handle. So you'll notice you've got a uh, charging handle there where you can chamber your rounds, uh, do all that fun shit, press checks, and it is on both sides. So you're gonna have it over here. The nice thing is it's non-reciprocating, which is critical because, hey, look, I'm starting to have some potential issues with lights and things like that getting in the way over here. So it's a very nice feature. Uh, the gun does lock back on last round. So unlike an MP5 where it's basically, hey, you hear a click instead of a bang and then you realize you're fucked. Um, you're shooting, 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 last round. Bolt's gonna lock back, uh, new mag comes in. You could either, you know, just chamber off of this that's already gonna be locked back um, or just drop your bolt from your uh, bolt release there. Let's see. Very, very nice, uh, but just know that I love that they sent this as three lug compatible. It's great. In terms of how it runs with a suppressor, very, very nice. It's a pretty minimal amount of gas that's coming back in your face, especially compared to some of the AR9s that I've run where you go, look, it's it's just gassy as shit. Uh, this is comparative to many of those. Very, very nice. Um, very, very nice gun to run with a suppressor on it. And I think every round that I've put through this gun thus far has had a suppressor on it. Uh, da, 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 da. That is pretty much it for the upper and the lower. Let's talk a little bit about price. So they're gonna run, give or take, about $23.50. That may or may not come with some sort of either stock or pistol brace. My particular one I got for a little bit less than that, even though I paid the retail tag on it, it did not come with a brace or a stock, which is how I wanted it to come because I had already purchased the stock. So hey, look, you're looking at about 2,300 bucks. Many of the, you know, most of the side folders that you're gonna look at are gonna run maybe 200-ish. And then if you're looking at something that's more of a telescoping option like this, you're gonna be looking at probably five to 600 bucks once you're all in. So point being, hey, look, just to get a gun with a brace or a stock with some iron sights and a couple mags, you're looking at about three bills. As configured, look, it, it, it does add up, especially if you're putting on nice, optics and <laughs> light suppressors, all that good stuff. Like, look, they're not cheap guns. You have to know that going in. If someone complains about price down in the comments, like, well, what the fuck did you think it was? It's a Swiss submachine gun, everyone. Did you think it was gonna be $8.99? Sorry, not how the Swiss do things. Okay, so final thoughts on the B&T. For me, it is the current gold standard of subguns. And it's kind of fun that we're largely kicking off some of this subgun content with the APC-9 Pro, because for me, it is the absolute bar and threshold that everyone else has to compete against now, including, but, and look, that's not just me, right? Again, look at the Army, Air Force. Um, if, look, if they're saying the same thing and like, like, hey, look, start to pick up on the trend, right? So what you're dealing with is a very, very, very nice firearm that is wonderful to shoot, extremely reliable, um, it's just phenomenal. Like in terms of how small you can get the gun. I mean, look, it's got everything going for it. It's an excellent option as either like a backpack gun. I think it makes a lot of sense as a truck gun, it makes a ton of sense as a home defense gun. I can tell you this is probably gonna be in the roster of like bedside options. It just checks a lot of boxes. Again, environment dependent if you're like hey look i live on a farm on 100 acres out in the middle of nowhere like okay cool y you know your closest neighbors are nowhere near you hey something like a 300 blackout or a short barrel ar something may make more sense for you i think for a lot of people especially if you do work in an urban environment 
you're going to have a hard time finding something that makes much more sense than something like this. Is the price tag steep? Yes, it is. But that's, you know, look, that's just the cost of admission on some things like this. There's going to be some what I hope to be very good sub gun options that uh, I know we have reviews coming out of because I've already received the product, just haven't started testing it yet. So um, we are going to have some more, <coughs> I would say, more budget friendly uh, you know, thousand dollar ish price range options coming. But Hey, look, if you're looking for the Gucci of the Gucci, I think you've found it here. So one other thing I would tell you, Hey, look, if you think the price of these things is bad, um, look, they have these special edition commemorative kits. And I think there's something to the effect of like 300 of them. And they just came out and basically they're limited edition kits, uh, that commemorate the army picking up the contract or whatever. And just to give you a sense for it, it comes with the APC-9 Pro K, okay, so it comes with the K, K, a lot of Ks, but comes with the K version, which again, not my preference. It comes in its like custom formed Pelican. It comes with, it's kind of a special shout out here. It comes with a, uh, a limited edition Microtech that is serialized per the B&T APC-9 that it's coming with. Uh, this was, you know, I just called in uh, tricks and favors and did dirty stuff behind dumpsters to get one of these things, right? So don't take me, kids, don't take me as a role model. I'm not a role model, right? I do horrible things if necessary to get the cool shit. But um, they do come with these serialized limited edition B&T Microtech uh, knives, right? So pretty cool in that, shameless plug. But um, they come with that, like a couple mags and like a fucking challenge coin and some shit no one else is really going to care about. Comes with an optic and a couple other things. But those kits... Seven thousand dollars. So hey, if you got seven G's burning a hole in your pocket there, you can probably go find some dealers that are moving seven thousand dollar B and T kits right now. It's excessive and absurd, but hey, you you know you do you. Um, final thoughts. Look, I, I love the gun. It is the gold standard for everyone else to beat and uh, compete against right now. So just know that there's very little that I can nitpick on the negative on this. Very, very rarely is there a perfect product. This comes about as close as you can get with my caveats being, look, the ambi safety or safety in general is not good and it needs some work. The factory B&T mags, you know, they're okay. They're not great. They're okay. Um, but there's so many other positives that it makes up for the couple little things that I find that could be better. So take that all with grain of salt. Um, but you will probably see this gun in many videos. It's a personal gun and it's staying with me. So, you know, that's, that's it. That's it, everyone. We've got exciting stuff coming and, um, message us or, you know, I don't know, comment below. I think I'm supposed to tell you guys to do that shit. So like comment down below and say your fucking color in the rainbow or whatever you want. So go comment with some bullshit down in there and I'll get back to you. Uh, APC nine pro awesome gun. We'll see you next time.